In this video, we're going to take a look at exporting another part to Blender and getting good results for UV mapping. So I have a gun here that I'm working on. It's a Valkyrie gun, and we want to take a look at just one part of it. So we're going to take this part. We're going to isolate it. It has some interesting geometry, I think, for this video. So we want to export this. And we're going to export it to an OBJ file. Now when our settings open up, this is what we get as our default. Now, the density slider is, I think, really important. Basically, it sets defaults for all your settings based on the number you put in here. The higher the number, the more polygons you're going to end up with. So... Basically, a lot of times, at least for the work that I do, I pretty much almost always set this around one or very close to one. So if we set that first, now you're going to see that everything rounded out a lot better. But obviously, we have all these sliver triangles, which is terrible. And this would be a nightmare to UV map. So we're going to dial in these settings. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is the min width in the max width so when i turn these on you'll see it trashes the model i do almost always use the min width and max width it just seems like you have more control over the export but you have to be careful because as nick allen was saying before in one of his comments on one of my previous videos depending on the numbers you put in here some of these might not change because if your number is outside of the range that you set here, then it won't have any effect on your model. So just be aware of that. So we're going to take a look at the min width. And a lot of times this number, I mean, it really depends on the size of your model. But for most of the stuff that I do for 3D printing, resin printing, and stuff like that, usually I'm pretty low on this number. Usually it'll be like, 0 0.0001 or 0 0.0005, somewhere around there. So in this case, we're going to start off with that. And once we do that, we got a lot of our curvature back. Now, how much of this curvature you want, you can set the number appropriately to get that. Um, just be aware that the higher you make this number, it can affect your other settings. So on the max width, this setting right here, what I found usually for it, is that it will divide up flat faces so that you can't have really long slivers like this. So for that right now, we'll set this to 0 0.01. You'll see how it divided that up into like little squares. Um, how big those squares are just depends on your model, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But we're going to switch this over to N-Gons. So actually, if I change this back, let's just set that to 1. You're going to notice that, again, you get these long sliver triangles. But you'll also notice we have this flat face right here, and then we have curvature on that flat face. When you're using N-Gons, what you need is you need a connection point like you see here but we don't want to set them up the way it is right now. If you don't have those connection points to each one of those curves, at least one, then you're going to get an artifact in your rendering. And you'll also get an artifact in any maps that you bake out or anything like that. So we want to fix that. So we'll go back into here and set this to 0 0.01. Now you'll notice that when it put this grid on this flat face, now we have a connection to each one of these. So that'll do really good for that, taking care of that. Okay, everything else looks pretty good there. So now let's take a look at the face plane tolerance. So again, basically what I do is I start working my way down the list and I start setting the numbers in between my range and I find out what looks best. It's always good to start with a higher number and then lower it down to get the results that you want. You just have to be careful because each one of these settings can affect other settings. So you really want to tweak these in small increments at one time. 
So for this one, I'm going to go 0 0.01. Now that cleaned up things quite a bit. So it's not as dense. We still have nice curvature. You're not going to see a bunch of flat faces there. That looks pretty good. But we can actually go through and mess with it a little bit more. So let's try 0 0.001. See, there was very minimal difference there. So I think I'm just going to put that back. 0 0.01. Because you could see that it changed in here. See, it added, it added this in there. I don't like that. Okay. Another thing too that you want to watch out for is basically what we want is our fillets. We want one split down the middle if we can get it. That's going to make it easier to UV map and it's also going to look nicer in your renders. So let's move on to the face angle tolerance. So here we have 0 0.10 and I actually, I like that number, but let's play around with it and see what we get. So let's go, zero 0.01. Now you can see that it divided everything up which will give us really nice curvature around there in the polygon model, but it's going to drive our numbers through the roof. So we definitely don't want that. So let's go back to 0 0.1. And if I think if we take this number higher, so like we want 0 0.5, see now we're getting into the point where you're going to see faceting on your model, and we don't want that either. So we'll put that back to 0 0.1. Now the edge plane tolerance. The edge plane tolerance, what is our number right now? That's too low. So let's try 0 0.001. Not much of a change, but that's okay. I just didn't want it that low. So the edge angle tolerance... That number actually looks pretty good, but we'll take a look at changing it too. We go 0 0.5. Let's see if that makes a change. Not much. It might have straightened out some of our lines. So we can leave that like that. So our curve max length. This one's actually set pretty close to what I want it to be also. So we're going to leave that and let's take a look at the plane angle. Let's go 0 0.1. And you will see that there isn't much change there. I think overall this looks pretty good. Let's check out the results inside a blender and see what this gives us. We'll go file, import, OBJ. So here we have our model. Let's turn off our wireframe real quick. So now here you can see our model inside a blender. There's no artifacts. The shading looks really good. This will bake out really nice for any maps that you want to do. And as far as UV mapping goes, if we turn back on our wireframe. If we go into edit mode. And... If we go ahead and just select some of our edge loops, 
you'll notice that I can select the edge loops without any problems. So we would be able to mark these seams and divide this up and do all of our UV mapping pretty easy. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please hit the like and subscribe. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.